Hello and welcome to Hardline Rugby, the channel focusing on rugby union in the Americas. The penultimate round of the regular season was also the final round to feature all teams. This round featured more teams being eliminated from the playoffs, while three teams were able to guarantee their placings for the conference finals. This is the review of Major League Rugby 2021 Round 17. New York welcomed Houston to St. John's University, knowing that only a bonus point win would get them back into the playoff hunt. The Sabercats struck first, with Paula Bellacana finding space on the wing before running over for the first try. Rooney soon struck back, with Andrew Ellis making a dummy before diving under the posts for a seven-pointer. New York followed it up with another try, when Dylan Fawcett broke from the mall and got over the line. After some clever passing, New York struck again, when Ellis was tipped over the line but able to score a try. Although lifted past the horizontal, no further action was required. Just before the hydration break, Fawcett was able to spot the gap again as he cannoned over for the bonus point try 20 minutes into the match. The Roosters' dominance continued as Samu Tawake was able to boost himself over the try line. After a break from Fawcett, the ball made meters while being passed out and Apanisa Thakabalavu was the one to score New York's sixth try of the match. In the second half, it was Houston's turn to pass out to the wing, where Viramu Diki Dikilani being the one to score the try as he raced over. The next score came from the Sabercats, breaking the line before passing to scrum half Nick Boyer. With no one near him to tackle him and his blistering speed, he was unstoppable as he scored a seven-pointer. The comeback ended when New York's pressure on Houston's try line resulted in Max Stacy scoring a seven-pointer of his own. The final score came from when Joel Miranda was able to collect his own box kick, outpacing the Houston defense and running over for the try to take his team's points total over 50. The Roosters did the job required as they launched themselves back into the playoff picture. The Sabercats put on an energetic performance but were simply outmatched by Rooney. For San Diego's final game, they flew out to the nation's capital, with DC looking to end their losing streak. Old Glory got the party started as they were able to break through the tacklers until Tavita Nakali scored in the corner. The Legion responded soon with their own try on the wing as the ball reached Cecil Africa and he dotted down. DC struck back, with Jack Escaro diving over the line to extend his signs lead. San Diego retaliated when Kenai Nasokeke throw brought down was able to pin the ball on the line. As it looked that the Legion would be building on their attack, the ball spilled loose. DC captain Mungo Mason was the first to pick it up and couldn't be stopped as he scored his team's third try. With minutes before halftime, Old Glory conceded a penalty near their try line. Paddy Ryan took it quickly and scored a try for his side. Back from the sheds, DC continued their charge as Kieran Hearn found a gap and dashed over for the bonus point score. The Legion were next to score as the offload to Bjorn Basson left him with space to run in and get the bonus point for his team. Old Glory soon followed it up with another try, with Josh Brown peeling off from the scrum and able to muscle over to keep his side's lead going. After Chris Bauman stripped the ball illegally, he was yellow carded and out for the remainder of the match. With a man advantage, DC pushed for another try, and Napisai Naikatini was able to drive over for his side's sixth try. Although a man down, San Diego would not go quietly, and with minutes left of the half, Peter Malcolm dove over for the final try of the match. The victory for Old Glory is their first since Round 11 as they look to end their season on a high. The Legion will lick their wounds as they look ahead to 2022. The LA Coliseum hosted the meeting of the Guild teams, with Austin knowing a win would help strengthen their playoff chances. The Guild Gronies got the scoring started in the 12th minute, with a driving mole pushing Lachlan McAfee over for the try. A few minutes later, the Giltinis would hit back. When Austin's Michael Duval held the ball down illegally, he was sent to the sin bin, and LA won a penalty try. A penalty to Austin kept them in the lead, before a clever kick by Billy Meeks reached the hands of Harrison Goddard, who offloaded back to Meeks as he crossed over for a try, and the lead of the match. Back to full strength, Austin stole the ball in the mole and attacked LA's try line. Hugh Roach found a gap and pounced to score the try and reclaim the lead. In the second half, LA came out five. They used their pick and go to get within inches of the try line until John Ryberg found a gap to score the try. 
LA got the bonus point when House and Goddard split the line out, eliminating any Austin defence and ran over for his side's fourth try of the match. The home side sealed the win when clever set play saw the ball passed out to the wing, where Ryberg collected and went over for his second try of the game. It's the Giltinis drinking from the victor's chalice as they do the double against their Gil brothers. The Gilgronis, meanwhile, must wait to see the result of the Utah game to have any hope of reaching the playoffs. Another cross-conference clash, with Atlanta looking to cement home advantage and Utah wanting to secure their place in each team's respective conference finals. After Marco Jans van Rensburg scored a seven-pointer, Johan Momsen followed it up with a try of his own. The Warriors, in their blue IOC per kit, looked to get a try of their own when Danny Christensen broke the line and got his side on the board. Atlanta responded, with Vili Halu dancing between tacklers to score the try. The visitors continued the pressure in the second half and were rewarded when Ross Deacon scored the try and the bonus point. The home side, known for their comebacks, rallied again and Sam Malolo peeled off to score the try to get his side back into the game. However, a wayward bounce from the kickoff found the ball in Momsen's hands again as he got his second try of the match for ATL. Atlanta got a moment of deja vu when Utah had another driving ball on their try line as Malolo got his second of the match. The Rattlers struck back, and a long pass out to the wing found Austin White, who raced over for the try. With time against them, the Warriors pushed once more, and being mere inches from the line, Malolo leapt over to score a seven-pointer and his own hat-trick. A penalty for Atlanta kept them ahead, and with the clock winding down, a dummy from Christensen allowed him to run in the final try of the match. ATL's Venom ran deep, as they got the bonus point win. Although a loss at home, the Warriors' try bonus point ensures they and LA will be the teams of the Western Conference Final. After the New York result eliminated them from the playoffs, New England were looking for silver linings in Marietta as they faced Toronto. The Arrows got the scoring started with a penalty kick from Sam Malcolm. The Free Jacks were held back as long as possible until the driving mall got Stefan Coxey over for the game's first try. Four minutes later, they repeated the action, this time with Billy Tolutau scoring the try. In the second half, a controversial decision went against Toronto, just like when they played New York. The ball was knocked on by New England in the tackle before Harry Barlow grounded the ball. Despite this, the assistant referee called it from the Arrows' hands, and the try stood. Demoralised and fatigued, the Arrows were unable to stop the Free Jacks rolling through again with a driving mob, this time with Connor Kindrigan scoring. With 20 minutes left of the match, Toronto proved that they had some fight in them, as Tommy De La Vega muscled over for the try. From a quick penalty, Manuel Montero broke through the New England line before offloading to Joaquin Tucolette for the seven-pointer, to see out Toronto's challenging season. The bonus point win was some recompense for the Free Jets. For the Arrows, the road trip finally comes to an end, with the Canadian team going home after four months away. The round ended in Washington State as New Orleans travelled to Seattle to keep their momentum going. Both sides matched the intensity of the other until the Seawolves broke through with an AJ Alatimu penalty kick. Seattle doubled their lead with another kick from Alatimu. The Gold were able to get back though with a kick from Carl Meyer. With halftime approaching, Seattle made a push to the try line and James Malcolm burst over for the first try of the match. In the second half, Meyer got another penalty for the visitors. It was soon followed by another try for Malcolm as he extended Seattle's lead further. The next score was another try for Seattle, with J.P. Smith causing a dummy to allow himself to run over. Final score came from the penalty kick from Kieran Joyce to seal the victory for the New Orleans. A spectacular performance from the Seawolves, showing that even though they've already out, they still have some fight in them. This loss now plays the gold in a precarious position, as they must get the bonus point win and make up the points difference in their final match of the season. But no conversion. Here's a trivia question. Who gets credited for the, the conversion kicks when it's an automatic seven? That's a good question. Thank you. Here's Rob Aramiscu. You hear some roars from the stands because he's a, another local product, Xavier High School in Manhattan. Joe Miranda! Joe Miranda, does he have the pace? Does he have it? Taylor Howden closing! Joe Miranda with the try! Oh, oh, oh. Joe Miranda, take the 
foul. That was awesome. That was so good. These are my predictions for round 18. What are your predictions for round 18? And what was your favourite match of round 17? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification to stay up to date on all the videos for Hardline Rugby. As always, my name is Stuart, and thanks for watching.